You call me an infidel. You in the Quran. I didn't in, call you an infidel. You, you said I'm an infidel. Me, am I an infidel? You said yes. Infidel to me, okay. a disbeliever. Infidel yes, you are a disbeliever in the in Quran yeah. gives you the justification to behead me. Yes, and to kill me. When you finish. End of story. Chapter 60, verse 8, the Quran categorically tells the Muslim to be kind and be gentle with those non-Muslims who do not fight you. Those who do not fight you for your religion and do not drive you out of your homes, be, be kind and gentle to them. Whenever we see something that Muhammad has done wrong, you pipe up, it's not authentic. But what we're seeing when we look at the sources, we're seeing Godfather mentality. People are getting assassinated. In fact, when you look at Abu Bakr, when you look at Ali, right even after Muhammad, people are getting assassinated in the religion. He could find a lot more of the Prophet's battles and his expeditions and his adventures and execution of people, a lot more. And we defend the Prophet because he did exactly what was necessary. He was a ruler. He was a ruler whose job is to implement the law. These women are against their husband, I, I by the husband being yeah. chopped by the husband. We'll, we'll get in the ring. You give them the other. You challenge you. Give you look, them the other. You look, have a nasty you choice. Challenge you. You challenge her. You look, you look, you look, you look, challenge you. You look, 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 there's Can no wife abuse. Listen, Jesus is all about Jesus. Why would you lie to your wife? Jesus is all about love. Why would Jesus is all about love? Yes. Praise him in heaven. Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. Jesus is Lord. He is God. He is Lord. Carry on. He Carry is on. Lord. Jesus is Lord. Carry on. Is Lord. Okay. Okay. When you finish, anyway, anyway. When you finish, you he 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 I'll tell you what. I, 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 have I have a question. I have a question. God bless, God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, of course. God bless you. Yeah. Okay. Jesus says, love your enemies. Okay. I love you, man. Yeah. Wait, no, wait, you don't love us. No, no, no. Call me what you want. No, no, no. Can I talk to you? Can I talk to you? Call me what you want. Can I talk to you? Call me a cracker. Call me a cracker. Call me anything. Can I talk to you? Can I talk to you? Huh? Can I talk to you? God bless you. Can I talk to you? Can I talk to you? Can I talk to you? God bless you, brother. Can I talk to you? Can I talk to you? Uh, only me. Can I talk to you? You're saying you're saying Jesus loves me. You love me. And the things you're saying on camera are hateful things. You're spreading hatred against Muslims. Let me finish. Let him finish. When you're saying you love beat your wife, you're lying. You're lying on us. You're lying on us. You don't know Muslims. You don't know Muslims. You don't know Muslims. Okay, if I said, if I said, if I said, if I said you lot rape your wives, or you lot, you lot, you lot, you lot a bunch of drunkards, you lot, you lot, you know the word you use, the word you use, the word you the word you use, the word you use, the word you use, the word you use, the word Wait, if I said to you, you lot, you lot, do this, do that, 
How would you feel? How would you feel? You lot steal. You lot cheat. Yes, you do. That's why we need a savior. That's why we need Jesus. Because we have the same problem. Praise God. We have Jesus. We are sin sick, but we are saved. Preach, brother. That's the whole reason why Jesus came. We are sinners. Saved by the grace. You're a Gentile. You're a Gentile. He didn't come for you. Is it soccer films? You're a Gentile. Coco films. Right. You're a Gentile. Let me ask you. Let me ask you. How can I Okay. Are you are you having noise? Are we having a discussion? Are we having a not? Are we having a noise? Are we having noise? Let, let, let me ask. Let no, me ask I, I know this place. I know this place can excite people. No, no, no. I know this place can have an exciting. Let me ask you this. Am I an infidel? Yes, you are. Thank you. What, what is an infidel? Hold on, First hold on, of all, brother. Wait. No, no, no. Brother, yeah. What does the Quran instruct you to do with infidels? Quran, as a general principle, Answer instructs me to live kindly. No. Live kindly. Live kindly. Do you have instructions you to, be, me a question, to no, be no, head? Don't lie. Okay. If I'm lying, you can correct me. But in your own time. Do you have you instructions to behead infidels? Shall we time it? No, we don't. Shall we time it? That's not how we time it. He's asking me. He's asking me. One second. Do you want to time it? Okay. No, no, no. Don't interrupt. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a gentle discussion. I'm sure he's able. He's perfectly able to have a discussion. And that's what I'm interested in. I'm not interested in noise. I'm not interested in noise and shouting match. Let's have a discussion so people can hear it from our. Honestly, I've got 15, 15 Quranic scriptures Quran, that Quran, instruct no, what, to do, what to do with infidels. Are you going to answer the question for me? Yes. Are you going to answer the question for me? Behead them and yeah. kill Wait, them. Exactly. Yeah. Is that why all the infidels are, 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 are living in the Arab world brother, and they're still alive? Brother, How come there, all brother. It's there. there. So, when, when ISIS is, is doing what they're doing, they're only following what the Quran says. Are we talking or not? Are we talking or not? Are we talking or not? You call me an infidel. You, in the Quran... I didn't call you an infidel. You, you said I'm an infidel. Me, am I an infidel? You said yes. Infidel to me, okay. a disbeliever. Infidel, yes, you are a disbeliever in the Quran, yeah. gives you the justification to behead me. Yes, and to kill me. When you finish. End of story. Yes. Okay. That's what it says. Okay. That's your religion. Can I respond? A religion of hate. Can I respond? Jesus says. Again, you're not going to let me respond. You're going to preach to me. You're not going to respond. You not going to respond let me respond. And on that note. Why would you not let me respond? Just on that one point, on that one note. Yeah. End of discussion. Okay. 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 On that one. On that one point. End of discussion. Can I respond? Can I respond? At least you're fair. Okay. How do you justify that? This is. Okay. This is a Christian. How do you justify murder? This is a Christian reading of the Quran. The Muslim reading of the Quran. What is it? The Quran in chapter 60, verse 8. I'm giving a reference. He spoke without references. Chapter 60, verse 8. The Quran categorically tells the Muslim to be kind and be gentle with those non-Muslims who do not fight you. Those who do not fight you for your religion and do not drive you out of your homes, be, be kind and gentle to them. Chapter 60 of the Quran, verse 8, and that is our rule. This is our norm. This is our standard, not the way Christians... Okay, let me read it. It's here. It's here. It says so that your audience can see how Christian missionaries lie to them day and night and brainwash them. Don't cut it. Don't and cut don't this cut this bit. bit. Don't cut do it. not cut this don't bit. Don't do a cocoa. Okay. Don't do a cocoa. Okay. Allah does not forbid you as regards those who did not fight you on account of faith and did not expel you from your homes that you do good to them do what? and deal justly with them do, what? do, what? do good do good to them do what? and do good to them do good to them and That's deal right. justly with read them it, That's right. this is the quran takbir so so no 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 i'm not saying this one i'm not allowed to say this one allow me to say this one no one hack me thank you thank you so let's have a discussion for the reason so now that is clear now that is clear the quran is categorical in its statement that the non-Muslims are to be treated justly and That's kindly and kindly. I just read a verse from the Quran and he's saying it's a lie. I just read a clear categorical verse. So, so, so what? No, no, I'm not finishing. Finishing now, in 30 seconds, finishing. 
Now, the verses he is quoting, the verses he is quoting are commandments on war. Quran is a book of law. Quran tells us when you go to war, this is what you do in war. Okay, but those who do not fight you, do not expel you, are in peace with you, want peace with you, be kind and just to them. Allah commands you to be just and kind to them. This is the rule of Islam. Now talk. I'm finished. I'm going to get the verse for you now. In the Quran. Yes. I want you to. I want you to respond to what I said. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I appreciate. I'm not going to heckle. No. But I want him to address my point directly. Chapter 60, verse 8. The Quran, chapter 60, verse 8. If you are looking for that particular verse, it's here. Take it out. We'll give it to you. We want we want the Christian audience of soccer films to know that your missionaries lie to you day and night. Big liars. They, they tell you lies about Islam and Muslims. Big liars. He was just telling us that Muslims, you lot beat your wives. He's a liar. He's a plain liar. It is forbidden. Beat your wife likely. Beat your wife lightly. Now he's saying lightly. Now he's saying lightly. Right. And afterwards he's going to say no. It's a, it actually doesn't mean beating. It means something else. At least, at least he has, at least he has come back to lightly. At least he doesn't say chop your wife's hand off. Yes. At least he doesn't say chop your wife's hand off. Yes. Look, look. At least. Does the Bible say chop your wife's hand off? Are you a butcher? No, it's not. No, I'm asking. I'm asking. No, 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 no. How does it feel? How does it feel when someone takes your scripture out of context? How does it feel? How does it feel when someone takes your scripture out of context? This man, this man. Okay, while he's reading, while he's reading and looking for verses, ladies and gentlemen, Islam, Islam, Islam is a religion of peace. It's a religion of love. It's a religion of compassion. We the Muslims are commanded by our God, the God of Moses, the God of Jesus. The heavyweight champion, the undisputed. I've not brought any scholarship on this topic. <laughs> okay, let's talk about it. Let's go. Let's move. Let's move. No, 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 no. I'm tired. I'm gonna stand next to the grill. Keep coming. Keep coming. Come, come, come. I'm gonna stand next to the grill. Look, because I'm tired. I wanna lean on the grill. I wanna lean on the grill. I'm tired. So come, come this way. Okay. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to this way. Okay. Bring all the Christian missionaries from the world you can here to talk to me and prove that Islam is a faith that promotes violence, indiscriminate violence against innocent people or anyone for that matter. I want to. Talk, okay. I want nice to talk. and civil. Let's keep it nice yeah. and civil. Yeah, yeah. I don't want no elbows, nice no knees. Yeah. Keep it nice and clean. Let's keep it civil. Who wants to talk to me? Who's going to talk to me? I'll have a chat with you, bro. Yo, you want to talk to me? Let's go. I'll just get my notes. Oh, no hate okay. speech. <laughs> how about how about talking without notes? I'm talking without notes. Oh, no, but then he doesn't have evidence. I'm talking without notes. No, but he comes with evidence. Yeah, no, I have the evidence in my mind. Oh, I'm this is a good one. The evidence in my mind. Brother Adnan, he's a liar. He forgets. He forgets. So, so what are, what are we talking about? So, so what are we talking about? What's the topic? What's the topic? What's the topic? What's the topic? Violence. Violence. In, vi violence in what? Killing innocent people in Are you going to be debating? I'll give you the No, 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 no. It's, it's between okay. them. Okay. 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 Jogo. We're gonna. I don't juggle. I'm the referee. I am the referee. You made the referee. I made myself the referee. I'm gonna. I'm gonna now have a discussion with this gentleman. Yes. Yes. Uh, what's your name, sir? Punish. No uh, helping. No assisting. Jason Burns. Jason Burns. I'm gonna have a discussion Jason with Jason Bourne. on the on the issue that <coughs> violence, indiscriminate violence, is completely forbidden in Islam. Violence against innocent people is completely forbidden in Islam. In fact, Islam commands Muslims to go out of their way to be kind and just to non-Muslims and, and even animals, let alone humans. Trees. In Islam, we are commanded not to even cut the trees and kill animals unless we're going to use them for food, right? This is how far Islam goes. To the contrary, I will show from Christian history how Christians actually practice this scripture 
throughout the centuries they were burning witches alive, they were burning heretics alive, they conducted massive campaigns of murder and slaughter and mass killing, right? Crusades is one example. And uh, what's happening even today? Okay. What's happening even today? You know, American South. Are we having a dialogue? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm finishing right now. Okay. What's, what's happening in Palestine today? What's happening in Palestine today? I'm finishing right now. Ten seconds and I'm finished. And my friend, my, my friend, why, why are you so impatient? Wait. What's happening in Palestine today is directly linked, directly linked to the American South, the Bible Belt. American evangelical Zionist Christians are directly funding the state of Israel yep. and its aggression against the Palestinians. Even today, Christians are somehow justifying oppression of a people who have done nothing to them. He agrees with and them. Bible, they use the Bible to justify. And he agrees. Jason agrees with them. And let's talk about it. You agree? No no heckling. Heckling. You see, no heckling Can I get a hug? Yes. yes. No do, do you want another one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We did not you did. 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 Back row here, we just have a dialogue. Yeah. Yes, let's do okay. have a dialogue. So people can hear it. I cannot, I, I have not come prepared with this. I've just got a few things here for, for, the, for, for this discussion, right? I cannot doubt this gentleman's scholarship in these areas. Okay. So, what I would say is the history of violence, whether it be accused in Islam or Christianity, comes down ultimately to the founders, Muhammad and Jesus, right? And my argument to you is if the source is poison then it will bear fruit as poison true right i agree and 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 the source of christianity is jesus christ it's not right? I disagree. Can, can I and the source of islam okay. is muhammad okay, and i just read this yeah, to you part. and you could answer it okay it says the following are taken from the earliest biography of islam's prophet written by ibn ishaq here are a few examples, page 551. Muhammad ordered the murder of Fatima and her friend for singing songs of satire against him. Okay. So for me, if you were getting examples of your leader, either, even if I take the most kindest thing, that he was just happy this person got assassinated. Right. It, shows me that that's not a good foundation okay. to, to build was jesus can I, can I to that? Wait, wait, wait. jesus said there's no greater love than this that a man lay down his life for his friends okay okay and he died for his friends he gave his life for his friends okay can i okay. respond to that very quickly you read a part from uh, uh ibn isaac's history first of all this report is not authentic it it is attributed to the life of the and can you stop laughing can you can you just sit, film can you stick to filming to and stop, stop heckling? Okay. You heckle, okay. you can okay. go okay. play. Okay, okay, okay. The cameraman is actually, you know... Go on, go on, go on. Yeah. Just focus he's, on the prize. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm crying? Am I, am I crying? Okay. So, so... What's your name? Go, go, bro! Go, go, go. Can, can you ask this Christian gentleman? To be, be Christian, we at least in this discussion. Okay. You're preaching this beautiful Christianity. Can I see it in practice? Okay. Yes, He's thank you. He's a good lad. Yeah, okay. He's a good lad, but tell him to be good then. Okay. Yeah, okay. Come on, yeah. Okay. Right. Now, Ibn Isaac, this particular report is inauthentic. We don't accept it. Just like you don't accept the Apocrypha. Apocrypha New Testament. You don't accept the, the Gospel of Barnabas, for example. You don't accept the Epistle of Barnabas or you don't accept the Shepherd of Hermas and all these apocryphal books. You don't accept the Gospel of Judah, do you? No, you don't, right? Apocryphal works. We have likewise uh, inauthentic information attributed to the Prophet and his life. This particular report is not authentic. Coming back to, coming back to Jesus, as you claimed, and you read him selectively, there is a parable in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, where Jesus said, those my enemies who would not believe in me, bring them in front of me and slay them, kill them in front of me. This is what Jesus said, and it's a parable. Now, I ask a question, why was Jesus giving this parable to his followers? 
those my enemies who would not believe in me, bring them hither and slay them in front of me. Okay, now you respond to it. Okay. So, in, well, in fact, you are guilty of what you are accusing Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad, in fact, there are examples where people insulted him. Very quickly, I'm going to finish. Uh, people insulted him and he didn't punish them. He didn't kill them. People came to him for forgiveness and he forgave them, right? There was a man who was guilty of torturing his family, Prophet's own family. The man who killed the Prophet's uncle, Wahshi. In the same book, Ibn Ishaq, what these Christian missionaries do, they read a book from page one to page 500. They will find one sentence out of, this, out of those 500 pages. They will pick the sentence and they will ignore the entire chunk. They will ignore the entire story where the Prophet forgave hundreds of people for committing crimes against him. And they will pick one inauthentic or unauthentic report and make it the norm, make it the rule of the life of the Prophet. This is how these Christian missionaries are actually distorting our history. Okay, Adan, yes, I, no. did I not give him a, a lot of time? Yes, you did. Thank you. Okay. My response to that, Adan, is uh, first of all, if, if you know, have you heard the film Godfather? Yes, Godfather. I've seen it. Yes. Right. You got the Godfather, right? Yes. He writes a letter saying, I want you to assassinate someone. Yes. Right? They get assassinated. The police come, right? They find the letter and his mates say, it's not authentic. Whenever we see something that Muhammad has done wrong, you pipe up, it's not authentic. But what we're seeing when we look at the sources, we're seeing Godfather mentality. People are getting assassinated. In fact, when you look at Abu Bakr, when you look at Ali, right even after Muhammad, people are getting assassinated in the religion, right? So what I want to just say here, this life of Muhammad, I would just say, first of all, that you pick and choose your sources. And the other thing as well, which is very difficult, we can get accurate information about who Jesus is. We have first century sources that Jesus lived and died and rose again, right? And the, pick, the verse that you pick is about the kingdom. It's about the coming judgment. It's not about in Jesus' time, because you'll never find anywhere. So Jesus where, let me finish, let me finish. You'll never find anywhere, apart from when Jesus goes into the temple and he's angry because they're dealing in, in money and stuff like that. You'll never find anywhere where he encourages violence or killing anybody. He was a person who went to the lepers, he went to the poor, he went to the weak, and he showed love to people. And his main mission was John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish. His main mission was to die for the world. Now, I just want to get back to these historical sources because you're a historian, right? Okay, can we go step by step? Because yeah, you made claims yeah, but I just wanna, and I want to respond to But that. I let you speak a lot, right? Yes, okay. I'm very disturbed that you as a historian when you say it's not authentic because it chooses you, but we have a very big problem with these sources because it is very difficult to find out the truth in Islam because there's so much, it, it, it's so historically inaccurate and such a mess, the sources, that really what you're doing at the end of the day is just making up what you want to say today without any proper no. historical foundation. Okay, what you should have done, you should have done some homework and gone to Bukhari you would have found better examples of where the Prophet actually executed more people than that. Why don't I help? I'm, now, I am helping you. I'm not giving away my sources or I'm not getting rid of, rid of them. I'm not disowning them. I'm owning my sources and I'm going to give you better things to go to. Instead of using this tatty biography of the Prophet, which has a lot of uh, inauthentic information, go to Bukhari. I'm helping you. You're a Christian missionary. You're a Christian activist. Go and read Bukhari and you'll find more sources where the Prophet is reported to have executed 600 men in one day. How about that? Does that sound bad? Sound bad. You're talking about one person here. Why? The question is why? Did Moses execute hundreds of people? Did Joshua do it? Was David doing it? Was Solomon doing it? Were biblical prophets doing it? Were the barbarians for doing it? Were the murderers, killers for doing it? That's the question. In the book of 1 Timothy 3.16, we are told that all scripture is God-breathed, right? And Paul, in, in this particular passage, he's particularly talking about the Old Testament. All Christian scholars are unanimous that this part where Paul says all scripture is God-breathed, is good for correction, for righteousness, and for teaching. For morality, in other words, 
to learn your morality, all scripture is God breathed. And that means the Old Testament, more so than the New Testament, because the New Testament didn't even exist when Paul was writing this. So he's talking about the Old Testament. Now, if the Old Testament is all God breathed, then we have Moses, according to your standard, you are using against me as a hypocrite, like a hypocrite, right? It goes against you. Don't, Wait, don't let me finish. Don't touch person. Don't touch person. Sorry, sorry. Keep it to Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it academic. Keep it right. academic. Okay. I'm, I'm treating you as an But it's, I, I believe it's hypocrisy. I believe it's double standards that you have one scripture, you believe in it, and you believe in it in as a virtue, right? Can you step back? Can you step back a little bit, please? Right. Um, so Moses is seen in the Old Testament in the Book of Numbers, for example. We are told Moses goes to his people and he says. When you go into the cities of Amalekites, right, keep everything or kill everything except women, young girls, keep them for yourselves. Do you stand by those scriptures? Do you stand by those verses, those ideals? Do you? If you don't, then you're not a Christian because you're going against the teachings of Paul. Paul is clearly saying all scripture is God breathed, right? So in light of that, as a Christian, you have no grounds to condemn the prophet of Islam doing exactly what Moses did, what Joshua did, what Abraham, Abraham actually didn't have, uh, what uh, David did, what Solomon did. So Abraham didn't have power to do so. But those who did have power, every single one of them had to fight enemies and execute the law. Prophet Muhammad in this case, where he executed 600 fighting men, people who actually actively fought against him in the battle of Banu Quraidah. Banu Qurayda was a tribe, a Jewish tribe who had broken the treaty with the Prophet despite his warning them not to do so. They broke the treaty and they were aggressive towards him. They tried to annihilate him and his community. And in retaliation, the Prophet attacked their territory, their fortress, their castle. And even from the castle walls, they were insulting the Prophet of Islam. Right? So, the decision, I am finishing right now. Uh, so, so, the Prophet of Islam left it to them to choose an arbitrator. They chose Sa'ad bin Mu'az, one of the companions of the Prophet who was previously allied to the Jewish tribe. This man was actually previously allied to this particular Jewish tribe called Banu Qurayza. So they chose him. They thought that he will be lenient towards us, not Muhammad. And he decided that all the fighting men shall be executed because of the treachery, because of the uh, breaking the treaty. This is exactly what Moses did. This is exactly what Joshua did. This is exactly Jesus simply didn't have power. Now coming to Jesus, and I'm finishing right now. Ten seconds. Adam, are you? 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 When you say Jesus was a pacifist, you're lying to your audiences again. First of all, according to the sources we have, Jesus went to the temple and he turned the tables over. He was actually, he looks like a troublemaker here. He's going into a temple, he's turning the tables over. Then he's telling his companions, his disciples, sell your garments and buy a sword. Sell your garments and buy a sword. I want you to directly address these points like I address yours okay. now. Well, Adam, I'll let you talk quite a lot, bro. Context. Right, first of, context, it, first of all... Can you address I, my points, please? Yeah, you said a lot. I yeah. want to get back to the historical sources first. You talked about the Adith. You talked about Bukhari, as if it was better than Ib Ibn um, uh, Ishaq. Ibn Ishaq, I, I, don't, I don't think he's a great historian. I think all the Islamic sources are really dodgy, right? But Bukhari's dodgy. Bukhari, your first, when was the first volume of Bukhari that we have? It's in the 11th century. The nine, when we have the full nine volumes, it's even later. So his, his historical sources on Muhammad, it's not even in the game, bro, right? So you using Bukhari, it's just nonsense. So why are you using but, 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 I'm using Ibn Ishaq because it's, it's all rubbish, but this is the best of the rubbish that I've got, mate. Right? And who told you let, that? Let, context, context. I studied it, scholarship. Muhammad, okay. Muhammad, Muhammad ordered the murder. Uh, another young girl named Sarah was trampled to death mercifully by a mounted dis soldier dispatched by Muhammad after she insulted him. Page 551. We as Muslims, 
Don't tell the Christians to go and choose our sources for us. We choose our sources for ourselves because we know what is authentic and what is not. Right? Like if I was to come with the gospel of Judah today and say gospel of Judah is your gospel. Your gospels, four gospels are rubbish. They are not acceptable. You have to accept the gospel of Judah or you're being inconsistent. He would tell me to get lost and I wouldn't blame him for doing that because that's inconsistent. Our sources are what? The Muslims. Our sources are Quran and the Sunnah. And the Sunnah is primarily Bukhari and Muslim. And there is plenty, because he hasn't read Bukhari, he doesn't know what's there. He could find a lot more than that. He could find a lot more of the Prophet's battles and his expeditions and his adventures and execution of people, a lot more. And we defend the Prophet because he did exactly what was necessary. He was a ruler. He was a ruler whose job is to implement the law, to execute the law. Jesus never had that position. There is no comparison between Jesus and Muhammad and Moses. Muhammad and Moses were alike. They both had power. They both ruled. They were rulers and they had to execute law, which sometimes includes executing people. Jesus never had that position. So you cannot use Jesus as an example to do a comparison with Muhammad. Jesus, on the other hand, had told his companions, far from being, far from being a pacifist, he told his companions to buy swords. And he said, oh, you buy swords because just in case, just in case someone attacks you. So what the hell was the prophet? What? The question is, what on earth was the prophet of Islam doing? Why do you keep coming close to me? Can you step back a little bit? Sorry. And this entirety is all moral. Do you agree? Just one point. Yes or no? No, no. I'm giving you permission. I'm giving you permission. Do you agree? The Old Testament is entirely moral. Do you agree or disagree? Just do your I'll do mine. I'm asking you a question. Why would you not give me a solution? Yes or no? Yes or no? Ask me, is the Quran all moral? Yes. Is Hadith, is Bukhari Muslim all moral? Yes. Yes. Is, is the Old Testament all moral? Okay. No, no, no. Okay. Do you want to debate me? Yeah. Just get away. Okay. So, okay. But you are not the one to decide the nature of the question. It is my opponent. Okay. Now, my question is, I'm not going any further until we deal with this point. Is the Old Testament moral? Okay. My, my right. question. I'm going to answer that question, but before I answer that question, I just want to say that the Islamic sources for history are rubbish. They're really bad. So why are you using let, them? Let me finish. Let me finish. Why are you because, using them against me? Because Bukhari is a far less. You're using something far less authentic than Bukhari. It's interrupted. Adam, please don't interrupt. He wants a way out. I treat you with respect. I've listened to everything you say. Okay. I've, show, I've showed you respect. No problem. And I've listened to you, right? All right. Right? Your saw the Islamic sources, you when you quoted a hadith, you never gave the chain of narration for it. So you've not shown any scholarship whatsoever. Okay? Your your uh Bukhari, your first volume that you have, the first volume of it, comes from the 11th century. This source is not a good source, but it's better than that source because it's a lot earlier, bro. Okay? It's not very good, but it's a lot better than 11th century when it's in the first century of Muhammad. Okay? Now I'm just going to read this and then we'll get on to what you said, yeah? <laughs> Muhammad gave thanks to Allah. Muhammad gave thanks to Allah when the head of Abu Jal was delivered to him. His crime mocking Ibn Musud, one of Muhammad's early converts to Islam, page 304. Okay? So we're seeing someone who's it's like mafioso style, right? Now, on the Old Testament, we believe in progressive revelation, Adam. The Old Testament, God gave the law and came in the land. But if you remember, listen now, Abraham was given a promise that he would, he would have a people more than the stars. Okay? The land was there for the Messiah to come through. Luther said that the Bible is the cradle where Christ is laid. 
And the Old Testament is pointed to Christ coming. So all these battles and all these things are there are not prescriptive for us today. They're descriptive. Jesus is the prescription. Listen, listen. They teach us lessons. You're not answering my question. No, listen. You, you, let me, I'm listening. Let me finish. Let me finish. You have to understand when you answer that question, are they moral? They have to be seen through the eyes of Jesus. We see the Old Testament through the eyes of Jesus, okay? They teach us spiritual lessons about Jesus and about God. Listen. Is, is the Old Testament moral? Finish. I've answered that. Now let me finish. No, you haven't answered Let me finish. Is the Old Testament moral? Let me finish. Let me finish. Jesus quoted from the Old Testament. He, he saw that as authoritative. Of course they're moral, okay? They're moral. Let me finish. The Old Testament is moral. You just said it's moral. You're interrupting. Yeah, okay, go on. You're interrupting. Yeah, please continue. It's important to realize that it's progressive. Right. Revelation pointing to Jesus coming. Brother, we're having this discussion. What about no, you're disturbing us? This is my last point. This is my last point, yeah. and then I've got maybe one point, and then I'm done. Yeah, because okay. I, I didn't prepare for this. I like to prepare. Right. Okay. Yeah, please do. Please do. I, I came on sign a manuscript. That's what I prepared myself for. So right. you wanted to debate that. I'm not pre not prepared for this yet. Right. Okay. You're clearly not prepared. Yes. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> yeah. And if you notice, not once, not once have I done an ad hominem. He talks about the Sermon on the Mount, chapter 6, chapter 7. He talks about you're the salt of the earth. It's all teaching about showing love, showing care, and being a light to people. Nothing about war or violence. Muhammad was involved in assassinations, he was involved in battles, he taught about battles in the Quran. There's no comparison between Muhammad and Jesus Christ. Okay. So now, now that Jason has said that all the Old Testament is a source of morality, and if it is a source of morality, then Muhammad was perfectly justified in did what, what he did, right? Because if the Old Testament is a source of morality for Christians, which it is, then in that case, what Moses did, what Solomon did, what David did, was far worse than what Muhammad did. Were if they, it was bad. If, if, yeah, they were all prophets. They were all prophets. David, Solomon, Moses, were all prophets. Yeah. Okay, anyway, anyway, anyway. So, so ladies and gentlemen, the debate or the discussion is over before it began. Before it began. Why? Why? You cannot, Christians, I'm talking to Christians and missionaries more so. You cannot possibly attack the Prophet of Islam on anything, on anything, and not attack your own prophets like Moses. Joshua, David, now coming to Jesus. Now coming to Jesus. My friend Jason kept saying that Jesus came with a new covenant. The Old Testament has been abrogated. We don't follow those rules and laws, albeit or despite them being moral. We don't follow them. We follow Jesus Christ, who was a pacifist, who came with nothing but love, love, love. Love all over the place. Hearts, hearts, hearts. Hearts, hearts, hearts. Every time Jesus spoke, hearts could be seen flying around, right? Right? But I gave passages from the very scripture he's quoting from. Jesus said, sell your garments and buy swords. He didn't say go and buy a heart. And it has to look like that. And it has to be red in color. He didn't say that. He said, go and buy a sword, right? And then Jesus said, those of you who do not believe in me, bring them hither bring them in front of me and kill them. That's what Jesus says in the gospel. Kiss them. Kill them, not say? kiss them, kill them in say? the gospel of Luke. Okay, yes. Gospel of Luke 23, 17, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, 23, 17. Can you read gospel of Luke? Now, my friend came back and he said, no, that's the second coming of Jesus. That's even worse. That's even worse. So Jesus will become a mass murderer when he comes back. So first he was pretending to be peaceful. He came with love, 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 kisses, 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 all over the place. And then, and then, and then he told his followers, when I come back, I will commit a massacre of a grand scale. I will kill men, women, and children, according to the book of Revelations, by the way, it's there. Jesus will kill men, women, and children, even the children of prostitutes. Right? So, 
Such is the love of Christianity. Now he talked about. I'm finishing now. Hurry up. Be patient. Why, why did you? When he was talking, why did you say hurry up? Stop it. Stop it. There we have other cameras, right? So. When it comes to fruit, my friend Jason mentioned the seed and the fruit. I want to talk about that in the last 30 seconds and done. The seed of Christianity, which comes from Paul, by the way, the first claim Jason made that we follow Jesus. You don't follow Jesus. You actually follow, follow Paul, Paul of Tarsus. You are believers of Paul. Paul is your prophet. He is your mentor. He is your teacher, not Jesus Christ. That's why the fruit is what it is. And throughout the Christian history, pick up any book on Christian history up to the 19th century. Even today, as I said, what's happening in Palestine is directly funded and supported by evangelical Zionist churches in the Bible Belt in the US. And they justify the aggression against the Palestinians by using the Bible. He is not going to comment on that. I dare him to talk about all those evangelical Christians in the American South funding directly the state of Israel and the settlers in Palestine who are indiscriminately killing innocent Palestinians. Go on, talk about right, thank you. That's thank the fruit. You. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Bible right, study, you have people who do exegesis or eisegesis. Yeah. Exegesis getting Bible in context. Eisegesis is getting one verse, pulling it out of context. We've seen a miraculous, wonderful eisegesis, not exegesis from our Muslim scholar here. It says here in Ibn, Ibn uh, Ishaq, it says, Al Harith B. Sawed was considered a hypocrite after initially embracing Islam and later rejecting it. For this, Muhammad ordered Umar to kill him if he found an opportunity to do so, page 384. I like Godfather, the film, and when I look at Muhammad, it's like Godfather number three. Then after him, you have Abu Bakr assassinated, Ali assassinated, and it's assassination, assassination, and it's violence everywhere you look, even in early Islam. The first 300 years of Islam was expanded, not by dawah giving sweeties to kiddies, it was, in, it was dawah by <laughs> cutting people to pieces. Yeah. They attacked the Byzantine Empire, <laughs> not by giving sweeties, but by chopping them down, chopping them down and chopping them down. Yeah. That's because it came from Godfather number one, Muhammad, okay? Now here is some exegesis, brother. Aye. It says this in John 6, 35, 48. Are you ready for this? It says, Jesus says, are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Jesus said, cut them down. No, he said, I am the bread of life. John 8, 12 and 9, 5. He said, Jesus said, cut them down. No, he said, I am the light of the world. John 10, 7, 9, it said, I cut them down. No, I am the door. John 10, 11, 14, it says, I cut them down. No, it says, I'll mutilate them. No, I'll assassinate them. No, I am what? The good shepherd. Amen. John 11, 25, he said, I'll cut them down, assassinate them for mocking me. No, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen. John 14, 6, he says, I will cut them down. No, no. I will cut their ghoulies. No. I will chop their heads off. No, no. no. he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 15, 1. Are you ready? Are you ready? Last exegesis for you. I know we are. Ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? And guess what? Are you ready? Every time he quoted the Bible, yeah. he quoted it as accurate, the Word of God. Yeah. Every time he quoted the Gospels, he quoted accurately as solid historical data. His data is mumbo jumbo. We can't actually accredit anything from what he's saying, yeah? Nothing. Here you ready? Last one. Yeah, the John, John 15, verse 1. Aye. Jesus says, yeah. I will cut your ears off. Nah. Jesus says, I will chop your head off. Nah. Jesus says, advance an army nah. right into Medina. Nah. Jesus says, advance an army into Mecca. Nah. Jesus says, I am the vine. Yeah. All these are bread, light, door, shepherd, resurrection, way, truth and life and vine about the spiritual life of the soul of man and how you get right with God by loving God and your neighbor through Jesus Christ, the example of the greatest example, love as man has ever seen, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who is greater than Muhammad because he died 
and rose again. Jadasa. What, what was that? That was exegesis, okay, bro. That was exegesis. Let's go, Burns. That was Pete. That was Pete. That was Pete. That was Pete. That's not a mistake. To him, I respond. No, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. No more Burns. That's it. That's it. He started first. Yeah, he started first. You started first. I don't know. You started first. You started first. You can come back after me. You started first. No, you can do another one then. I didn't know. You can do another one. 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 You can do another to do another preaching now. So my response to all that is, have you noticed that he didn't comment on any of the verses I quoted from the New Testament where Jesus said, buy a sword. He has nothing to say on that because missionaries usually, they do not preach from these violent or not so pleasant bits of Jesus Christ. What they preach from is the verses he quoted and guess what? None of these verses contradict the, one, the ones I have quoted. A prophet has come to teach people morality. He has come people to teach people about purity of heart. He has come people to teach people about sincerity. And these teachings about, uh, of Jesus Christ are very virtuous. No doubt, Jesus came as a prophet and he had a number of jobs to do. And one of the jobs was to tell his companions to sell your garments and buy swords. He didn't comment on that. He doesn't he want to talk about he did, that. He, did. he wants to pick and choose selectively the Jesus of the 21st century, the peace loving, the evangelical Jesus who comes from the American South mainly and kills children in Palestine. Right? Now, 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 he, he doesn't want to talk about that. He will not talk about that. He, he will probably lose his job if he has one. If he talks about that, he'll probably lose his job if he has one. Right? So I will talk about it because I, my money is not hanging to my, 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 my dawah career, right? So all of these violent teachings of Jesus Christ are being used by Christians today to go and kill Muslims in the Muslim lands and even kill Palestinians in Palestine by funding Israelis, right? And you should see the faces of the cameraman and this gentleman over here. What? Right? Okay. So, with, with, with regards to... Absolutely. With regards to... With regards to... You, you, you forgot to turn it... You forgot to turn it your way. Okay. Now, with regards to the fruit of Islam. Islam, from the day one, he talked about Muslims coming out with the sword, killing everyone around the Arabian Peninsula, Byzantines, the Persians, the Indians, the North Africans, everyone got killed. But guess what? If you read history, which you have not, if you left internet scholarship and came to actual history, then you would learn some real facts. What are the real facts? Real facts are when Muslim armies went into Egypt, a Byzantine, Byzantine territory, a Christian territory, the native Christians, Coptic Christians joined the ranks of the Muslims because they were heavily persecuted by the Romans, by the Byzantines. When Muslims came to Syria as a military power, guess what? The Syrians resisted the first time and they were defeated. And then they lived with the Muslims. And then the Byzantine emperor came back to defeat the Muslims in a pitch battle at Yarmouk. This time when the Muslims are leaving, the Syrian Christians would cry. Are you listening? Who says so? Dionysius, a Christian Greek historian writing in Syria in the 9th century writes that Muslims, when they left the city of Damascus, the Christians were crying. They didn't want to be governed by the Romans, the Byzantines, the Christians. They wanted the Muslims to remain and govern them because Muslims are very, very just. Okay, very, very just. Finish. No, I know it hurts you. I know no, 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 you want to finish. Bad, no, bad, I know. It's not bad, finished. Bad, bad, right. bad, 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 bad. Yeah, every time I talk, every time I talk, the battery. Every time I talk, the battery. Okay. Okay. It doesn't end there. It doesn't end? Then, from, 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 all the way. All the way from North Africa, yeah. from Morocco to the Middle East, up to Persia, Muslims governed these territories and Christians flourished. Okay. The oldest Christian establishments and churches in the world are in the Muslim lands. Next. The question is, how did they survive? If Muslims had a genocidal policy like the Christians did, like the Romans did against the Jews and the Muslims, you know, 
There are no Muslims in Spain today. The ones who migrated thank, after thank, us, thank God, thank God. The Muslims are completely wiped out out of Spain. What happened in the 16th century? Who wiped them out? Where did the Jews go? From Spain. They were flourishing Christian and Muslim communities in Spain. What happened to the Jews and Muslims in Spain? Guess what? Christians came and lo and behold, Muslims and Jews disappeared. Okay, disappeared. Okay, too many points. Too many points. Crusades. Too many points. Crusades. Yeah. And, and colonialism. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. And colonialism. British Raj in India. What did the British do to the Muslims in, in India? What happened during the Indian mutiny? These Bible loving Christians, evangelical administrators working in India, very pious Christians, were mass murdering the Muslims in India. The fruit of Christianity. No touch all. No touch all. Right, can I finish now? Right, Did you notice anything what he was doing? This guy, this guy is a historian. But he didn't quote. Are you ready? One, two, three. He did not quote any historical data. Nothing. No historical data. No document. No, no, no. 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 No, Lay face, 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 yeah. And all the Spain stuff, Spain this, Spain that. Yeah, yeah. Didn't mention one historical book about Spain. <laughs> Not one historian about Spain. Oh, is... So all this is gobbledygook from coming from his mouth. <laughs> when you're being historical, use historical sources about Spain. He never used anything. He never said okay, anything. You can... hey! Hey, hey, hey. I know you hurt you. I know you hurt you. Richard Fletcher hurt you. Come in now. Look at Richard Fletcher. Richard Fletcher. Richard Fletcher. Adam, Richard Fletcher. 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 He did Start not again. use any solid historical sources about Spain. He waffled on about it. Yeah. He didn't give any historical I just gave data. You names. Then he gave us some scholars, but the scholars are secondary. Kennedy, we want primary sources. Richard Fletcher. Primary. Kunek, Kunek, Kunek. Kunek. Richard right. Fletcher. You don't want people to hear this. Now, no, he, he, now, now he went off into the American Deep South and all this, right? That's politics, right? Wherever you get politics, it's murky waters. I'm going to the source, to Mohammed, to Jesus. We have solid historical data that Jesus said in Mark chapter 10, I give my life a ransom for many. He came to die for the world. He died and he rose again. That was his mission. Preaching again. That, that was not a mission of violence. That was, that was a mission of redemption, right? Muhammad, Muhammad, let me finish. No, let me finish. 
Let me finish. This is not an intelligent don't discussion. Don't let him divert you, Jason. I thought he hurt you. I thought he hurt you. Jason, don't get diverted. Don't get diverted, Jason. You're attacking me as a person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Al Homedim. Stick to the Al Homedim. You just, you just, you just said I didn't give any sources, and you lied. Go, Jason. Let me finish. No, and you lied. You lied on camera. I did give sources. I said Dionysius is a primary source. I know he's hard. On Spain, you want sources? You want sources? Olivia. You have a take the pill. No, 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 no. This is not about chill pill. You, you, if you're talking to me, and if it's about honesty, and if it's about teaching, if it's about teaching our, our audience, if it's, then, then, no, 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 no. You got, you got to let me finish my point. Let me finish my point. Let me finish my point. We're not running. Okay. Go. Start again. Right. Start again. Stop. In Spain. Yeah, five minutes yes, start in again. Spain. No solid you guys documentation. No, no, no. You, you mentioned you America. We're going You're back. We're going back to the sources. You guys are serious, right? Let me finish. We're going back to sources. Now we're on solid historical ground which that historical Jesus died and rose again. Died and rose again. And that's his mission. But that's not history. It, it was not that's about legend. It's, Do you want another that's legend. That? We have solid I, ground. We have Josephus. We have Tacitus to verify that he died. We know that he rose again. The empty tomb. Let me finish. Let me finish. Josephus is interpolated. All Christian historians believe the passages on Jesus rising on the third day are interpolated. Josephus has I been don't. interpolated, I so he doesn't know what he's talking I, about. He I do. I, 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 I am a student of history. He heard Maybe you know he's talking to. It's he not about interpolation of Josephus. Yes. Do you want me to, co Let him do you want do you want me to give you the cutting edge scholarship on that? Yes. No, okay. No. Okay. No. no. Cutting your cutting point. Scholarship on I challenge you. I'm challenging you now. First, him a challenge. Josephus. When it talks about Jesus rising on the third day is interpolated. It's a challenge. If you can prove otherwise, then I, what, what do you want? I'll give you a thousand pounds. Thousand, on camera, on camera. If you prove otherwise, a thousand pounds. Let me finish, let me finish. The Quran. Josephus, when it talks about Jesus, is diverted. It's diverted. I'll come back to that. I'll come back to the scholarship, Jewish scholarship. No scholarship for Spain. Now, Josephus, he's on about Josephus. Uh, Jesus died, that was his mission, to die. That was the love that he showed the world, to die for the world. And we have historical sources, Josephus. Now he talks about interpolation, it's true. There's a little bit of interpolation, but no scholar in the world of serious academic repute says that Jesus did not die on the cross and agree with Josephus when he says he died on the cross. So we have all the historical data to prove the Quran is wrong, that Jesus died. Now here's the point. We're looking at the source. Jesus said he died and he died for people and he was going to rise again. I am the bread of life. I am the resurrection. It's not about violence. It's about saving souls and about bringing them into the kingdom through the love of being born again. That's what it's about. Muhammad rode into Mecca on a white horse with an army. Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey with no army. Yeah. Muhammad came as a king. Muhammad came as a king. Jesus came. Jesus came, crucified, whipped. This is not a man of violence. This is a man who has given himself as the son of God, who loved us and died for us. End of debate. God bless you.